I'm Dizzy, a 12 time 13 world time world champion, champion. A pioneer, a global b-boy activist, and you're watching the Dizzy Diaries b-boy vlog! Hey, what's up? It's Dizzy here. Welcome back to another Dizzy Diaries b-boy vlog. Today I wanted to make a quick video about the topic of storytelling. Now, storytelling is an art where you use breaking to consciously communicate a concept or idea. Now, I don't know why I chose to make a vlog on this when this is actually one of the hardest parts of breaking to master and even harder to explain in words. This takes years of working on your own moves, creating as much as you can, then choosing the best ones and figuring out how to communicate that move or idea so that the people who are watching get it and understand what you are trying to say with your breaking. So, the first level of storytelling is to understand that every story needs an ending. That is storytelling 101. That means that any concept such as a burn, a combo, or a pattern should have a good ending to complete it. When you do some sort of pattern in your breaking, for example doing something three times in a row, the math in it will draw the attention of the people watching. Just like how music has a predictable pattern which shows beauty and design, your movements can also have a repeating pattern in it which also portrays beauty and design. I recently made one of my monthly personalized training videos for one of my online students, the head coach, who's only 9 years old. This kid is extremely talented and creative. One of the things I, su I suggested that he works on is finding endings to his patterns. This following clip I'm showing you is an excerpt from that video. Please keep in mind that I'm trying to explain a complicated concept to a nine-year-old wonder child. Firstly, you gotta find endings to all the patterns and combos, okay? So you have to go into like upgrades, burns, and freezes at the end. So let me give you an example. For example, an upgrade would be where the, the last move of a pattern will be the best variation, the best one. So for example, let's just say you're doing kick out, it's like this. Boom. Kick, kick the last one, kick, bam. That's an example. Boom, 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 bam. You know what I mean? The last one will be the best one. Now a burn ending would be like when you end a combo or a pattern with some type of gesture or something like that to make it into a battle move. So for example, I have a little move where I end, I, didn't, I couldn't find a freeze or a way to end it, so I ended it with a little smoking burn. So it looks like this. And the last way to finish any a combo or a pattern is with a, a freeze or a pose. Okay, so it doesn't have to be like a really hard freeze, but a good pose that you're looking at your opponent where it just stops and you show that you meant to do whatever pattern it just was. It's kind of like you stop right after a pattern or a combo and say, can you do that? That's what the whole pose after is supposed to mean. So I'll give you an example. I'll show you a pattern into a pose. You have the, this move. All right, so I had a little tiny pattern. I did it twice and the third time, I went into like some pose. Or a combo would be something like, like this. So I hope you understand that the most vital part of storytelling is to have a good ending or punchline, which wraps everything up and makes the person watching you say something like, holy crap, I get it. Once more, here is an excerpt from that last video where I tried to explain and give an example to my online student about storytelling. 
Please keep in mind that I filmed this all in one shot, so I get really tired. The second thing I think you should do is have a storytelling concept. That means that when you go out, you want to make the round like I have a theme, right? And that way the theme will become like the judges will will look at it and be like, there's something new happening every round. So for example, if you have, so let me give you a few examples. Now storytelling is when you have an overall theme on the whole thing. So I'm gonna use a very simple example just to explain to you. Uh, let's just say the whole theme is uh, me just grabbing my foot like that. So what I wanna do is I wanna choose as many moves as possible that is using that concept. So for example, I'll top rock. I go down, okay, and then maybe my footwork, and then my last move. Okay, that's just a very simple way of, of explaining it. That's a very simple concept, but you can do that with so many other things, like maybe it's, you know, tossing. Everything is juggling, right? So for example, juggling would be... So anyway, you get the point. <laughs> so the point is to choose moves that are all similar and use it as a theme in your set, in your throwdown, right? That way, you're giving an overall theme or concept to your rounds. Now I know that this all may be a bit confusing to explain in words. If you don't fully get it, please feel free to ask questions in the comment sections below. Your feedback means a lot to me. And if I don't make sense with words, perhaps it's better that I give one more example in regards to having an overall theme and storytelling. This video I'm showing next was a teaser for a series I was once going to make on originality and style. I'll probably get back to it later on in the future when I have more time. The purpose of the following video is to show how I can create a theme based on almost anything and communicate it through breaking. I also wanted to show how life itself can inspire themes and ideas to use in breaking. Hope you enjoy! Thanks everyone for watching my vlog. If you are interested in a dizzy online monthly coaching and personalized training program where I watch and analyze your videos and create a suggested training plan for your, you based on your goals, objectives, and skills, please check out my Patreon account in the rewards section for details. Patreon link in the description below. Thanks for watching.
Peace.